afternoon, um, everybody. Thanks for uh, your being here on this uh, hot Friday of uh, June. And we are here to um, introduce you to the Mastering uh, International Cooperation and Development, uh, which is organized by uh, the Università Cattolica and particularly by uh, Azeri, which is the graduate school uh, for uh, economics and international relations. Thank you very much, Mara. Thank you. So welcome all to this presentation of the Mastering International Cooperation and Development. Uh, who we are. I have the pleasure to, to be with the director of the master, so Professor Beretta. Uh, I will directly leave the floor uh, to her after this uh, short introduction. Uh, so she will uh, introduce uh, uh, this meeting and uh, together with us uh, we have uh, Alessandro Trunconi uh, who is a graduate from the edition 2017 and 2018. I am Elisa Bonomi and I'm the program assistant of this uh, master. Uh, so, I don't know if uh, Professor Beretta would love to, to start and to, to introduce this meeting. Just to welcome you, thank you for being with us. We are happy to share our experience of uh, living through the yearly story of a group of people around 25 that meet in January and work uh, side by side for six months and then go for the internship and then come back uh, with their improved understanding of their professions and their interests and their uh, outcomes. And so uh, this is something very exciting. Uh, we have been doing this for 16 years in the Master in International Cooperation and Development. I've been doing this for a much longer time because I was one of the founder of Azeri back in 1996. So um, being with youth is always very pleasant and uh, being with youth that want to participate to contributing to building a better world is even more exciting. So you are interested in this program in international cooperation and development, which means that you worry about the common good of uh, our world, of the people of our world, of the current generation, of the future generations. So um, this is a very good common starting point. And uh, you're here to listen about how the program is organized and then you will have time to ask your questions so i would just thank you again for being with us and i will leave the floor to elisa thank you very much professor so let's start uh, a short introduction about Azeri. Well, Professor Beretta has already spoiled you that Azeri is here from 1995, and Azeri is uh, the Graduate School of Economics and International Relations of Università Cattolica, and uh, our mission is uh, to create and promote an open-minded learning environment, and we are really proud of it. Uh, in Azeri, you will find a multicultural environment, as I have already said, uh, because up to now uh, we have uh, hosted almost around 1,600 students from all over the world, in particular from more than 85 countries. Uh, you will find a high quality of teaching, mixing uh, both theory and practice, and we have professor, academics, but also, but also professionals from all over the world, and uh, the possibility to expand your professional and academic network. Uh, Azeri offers different uh, master programs, in particular uh, there is uh, the Master in Advanced Global Studies, MAX, uh, the Master in Economics and International Policies, which is actually a double degree, uh, so it's a little bit different than the other three. Uh, then we have, of course, uh, our Master in International Cooperation and Development, MICAD, and finally the Master in Middle Eastern Studies, MIMES. And moreover, uh, since 2016, uh, Azeri is offering also uh, online summer school, uh, such as uh, the, the one in managing international relations. So, what is MICAD? MICAD is a one-year specializing master that at the end of this year will give you the 60 credits and the final diploma. 
Uh, our goal is to educate uh, and training and train outstanding graduates uh, with, of course, different background, uh, whose aim is to take on uh, professional roles uh, within the international cooperation sphere. So in NGOs, uh, international organization, private and public agencies and so on and so forth. We are really proud of our program also because it is a well-balanced combination of theory and practice. In fact, as you uh, will probably see in, later on, uh, we offer both a scientific training, but also a professional training. So this is basically a perfect combination. And uh, of course, we want our students to go on with their professional career. And we try to offer them not only hard skills, but also soft skills. We are proud also of our international faculty because, uh, as I have already anticipated, we have uh, academics, uh, but also professionals from uh, all over the world uh, and from different uh, uh, development cooperation uh, organizations. So we are really, really proud of our uh, important faculty and also international students because uh, uh, an average from the edition of the edition from 2010 uh, until 2020-21, so the last uh, uh, edition which is currently uh, undergoing a at the moment, we have an average of 19 international students out of 25 members of the class. So we are really proud of this international and multicultural environment. Here uh, we have just put some uh, basic information about the tuition fee, uh, scholarships uh, and the application documents uh, that uh, uh, you need to upload in the portal in order to do the application. Of course, you can also find uh, this, uh, this information in our website uh, and at the end uh, you will find a slide uh, with all the contacts uh, and uh, all the website. Uh, basically, the uh, required documents uh, for the uh, application are the copy of bachelor or master degree, the transcripts uh, of uh, uh, your bachelor or master degree with all the grades and the exam that you have done, uh, your updated CV, at least one academic or professional letter of reference, uh, the copy of passport and uh, an application essay in which basically you need to explain why, why you are interested in this program, what are your main uh, objectives and your main aspiration towards this program. Uh, the deadline is uh, October the 30th, so um, there is still uh, some time, let's say. Moving more in detail to the program, so uh, it uh, lasted one year, as, uh, uh, as already anticipated, from mid-January until more or less mid-December. Uh, in the first period, so from January until June, students will be required to attend courses and to do exams of the courses that, you, that they will attend. And uh, as I have already said, uh, all the courses are divided into a scientific and a professional training. Uh, because from one side we have uh, uh, courses and subjects about uh, uh, geopolitics, uh, trade and finance for de development uh, and project cycle management, but uh, from the other side, uh, and uh, we are really proud uh, of this aspect because we offer a lot of courses that are linked to the professional training uh, and that offers uh, uh, enhancement of uh, soft skills. Uh, so you will find the courses on how to enhance uh, communication skills in development, but also courses on how to deal with international crises. The third and the first levels are the project work and the internship. The project work is basically a short, let's say, thesis, like 20, 30 pages according to you, to the topic and to the supervisor, uh, that is uh, to be developed with the help and under the supervision of one of the professor or professional of the master. So one of the professors that basically will teach you one courses in the first, uh, uh, in the first and the second level. Uh, it is to be uh, written uh, by more or less uh, the end of November, of course, uh, with uh, our help uh, and with the help of the supervisor. And at the end, uh, it should be presented towards a scientific commission, a scientific board, uh, which will be composed by the director, the program assistant, so 
myself and uh, some professors of the masters. Regarding the internship, I would like just to show you this uh, short slide, uh, which is actually about the internship list uh, of uh, students uh, of last year. So here you find the list uh, of internship. Yes, uh, during the pandemic, uh, in any case, uh, all the students of last year were able to find an internship and they did also a great job. So I have just put here the list uh, just for your curiosity. Uh, but let me just clarify that uh, the internship process is a process uh, that will be done together. So you will not be left alone, basically, because uh, actually from uh, February, more or less, uh, from the end of February, so at the beginning of the program, each student uh, will receive an internship form uh, in which he or she uh, should list uh, her or his preferences towards the internship process. And from then on, we will, we will schedule a private meeting, a personal meeting, in which uh, we will discuss about your personal preferences. And from then on, we will start working uh, on uh, applications. So I will be, let's say, your uh, helper, your tutor, also as for the internship process. So I will revise all the documents. I will contact uh, organizations and institutions on behalf of you. And if possible, I will send the application on behalf of you. So let's say that uh, this could be an advantage, uh, let's say, because maybe it's a, a better institutional way to, to look for internship. And you know, sometimes, especially when dealing with biggest uh, organizations such as the UN agencies, uh, uh, it's easier to uh, to have, you know, an institutional contact. So, Azeri, that sends uh, the application on behalf of you. Now, I would like to present you this short slide about uh, uh, a survey that uh, Azeri has done and that involved graduate from the edition 2015 until uh, 2019. Basically, we asked uh, our graduates uh, different questions, and the first one is basically, are you currently working? And uh, we're really pr proud to say that 91% of the, the graduates that replied to this survey answered that, yes, they are currently working. And uh, I'm linking the second slide because it's how long did it take to find your first job after graduation? And as you can see, a uh, high percentage, so almost 60% of people, 60% uh, of people, I cannot see it because it's smaller, 60% of people uh, found uh, an, uh, uh, the first work, uh, the first job uh, in less than six years, six months, uh, <laughs> six months, six years would be so long, <laughs> six months after the graduation, the graduation day. Uh, so we're really proud of it, uh, of this data, because it matters a lot. And uh, here we have just lit listed the slides about the sector in which they found their first job. And as you can see, the majority of them found a job in an NGOs on, or in international institutions and organizations, so UN agencies, EU institutions, and so on and so forth. So also in this case, a high, a high percentage. And the link to the previous one is this one, which is about the function, the functional area. And as you can see, the majority of them uh, worked in the project and program management. That for us is, uh, uh, let's say, one of the core subjects of our program. In fact, uh, at least uh, uh, almost 24 hours uh, are dedicated to uh, project cycle management with uh, one of the main experts of uh, project cycle management in Italy. Uh, so also these data are relevant. And then here just listed uh, for your knowledge, uh, the companies, well, actually better say the organization, the institutions in which they found uh, their first job. And as you can see also in this case, uh, the majority are non-governmental non organization, but also international organization. For example, we have a lot of UN agencies, especially if you consider that we, in our survey, we only consider uh, not only not all the MICAD edition, but uh, just uh, uh, four or five edition. 
And uh, this is one uh, interesting and amazing slide uh, which uh, uh, show you uh, the main point of, of strength of the master that uh, our graduates uh, uh, wrote in this survey. And uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, also in a visible uh, uh, way good to see, but also interesting to read because one of the main key points that you can read is uh, network building, international environment, multidisciplinary approach, practical approach, small classes, internships. So it's really interesting to see uh, what uh, our graduates uh, uh, think about our program actually. And uh, finally, I have just put here all our contacts. So you have my email address. Feel free to write me, to contact me. We can also schedule uh, just meeting to, uh, to know each other and you can ask questions. Uh, so do not hesitate in doing so. Uh, our contact, our um, telephone contact, uh, our website, our Facebook page, both of Azeri and also of Mikad, we try to keep it uh, uh, actually updated with a lot of posts uh, and uh, other information. And finally, the LinkedIn of uh, all uh, the Azeri master programs. Uh, I thank you for your attention. I would like, uh, before moving uh, to your question, doubts, comment, I will directly leave the floor to uh, Alessandro Tronconi, uh, who is our special guest and the graduate from the edition 2017-2018, uh, just to see if uh, he would like to, to share with us uh, his experience uh, in our master. And of course, uh, you can also ask questions to him. So uh, feel free to write uh, or to activate, switch on the microphone uh, after Alessandro's intervention. Hi, hi everyone. Um, thank you, Elisa. Thank you, Professor Beretta, for inviting me and for bringing back some memories. I saw the picture of the courtyard, and that was yeah, nice to see. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, why I chose the master? Like, I mainly chose it because of all the pros that were mentioned. Mainly, um, it's both like it's structured in a way that is both broad and specific at the same time, and so you get to know a lot of different subjects. Another point that was a, a good advantage for me was that it's short, that has its disadvantage, so it's, it means a lot of work, it means it'll be six packed months, um, and my days were full for those six months, it was <laughs> quite hard, but manageable anyways. And uh, here I would like to move on to the internship process and, and what um, I'm doing now, so probably it's more, more of interest. Um, my internship was with ITC ILO, the training center of the ILO uh, that's based in Turin. Um, and like Elisa said, I was helped by them to find um, what well, the organization, first of all, and also the, um, the concrete um, internship post. Um, it'll be hard probably to get it at first. You'll be like, you probably think like, oh, I'm not going to get an internship. I'm new. It'll be it'll be um quite amazing how then everything will um will turn out to like uh, you will turn out to link all your experiences and all you have all you knew all you all you've done into this internship experience um a couple of tips i can give you maybe if you decide to join Mikat and do this internship it, it'll is to link it maybe to the project work so that you have something you can work on that is directly linked to what you're doing. And also maybe you'll find your own uh, niche. Uh, for example, I was hired as an intern to work on a microfinance training program and uh, and that opened, that opened many doors on, on a world that I had little experience on. I studied economics and um, since then, I've been working on enterprise development. Um, another another tip I can give you maybe is like make it count. So do well, do your best at, at, in this internship, and then um, try to get to know as many people as possible, as many topics as possible, wherever you are, whether you're in a big organization or in a, a smaller organization, UN agency, NGO. It it doesn't really doesn't really matter. Um, what matters, I think, is you put 
the the like what you have uh, most, and uh, you yeah, you you make it you learn also from from the work you're doing. Um, about like what I what I did specifically, yeah, I, I was my internship was about this uh, big microfinance training program, and then I supported the um, or organization in other training programs. Um, after that, I moved on to another internship with the CDFOP, a European Union agency. I worked on uh, vocational education. Um, so yeah, you can see how basically well, a teacher before and like my career started to. Uh, be shaped around this theme of education. Um, after that, I went back to IDCI Law as a consultant and also um, to the ILO, like let's say the mother house, <laughs> to work on social finance, financial education um, themes and to support the support the organization in developing online training programs. And that led me to where I am now, which is again back at ITC ILO, the training center here in Turin, um, working on, we're, well, due to the pandemic, we're mainly uh, developing online training courses. And I'm still learning, still learning new skills daily, learning how to um, apply what I knew from my work experience and what I knew from the masters. Thank you very much, Alessandro. Thank you. And Alessandro was very clear on this. Uh, the six months you will spend in Milano will be busy, intense month, months. But uh, as Alessandro suggested, it's very hard to do it, but then when you've done it, that's a big, big, uh, let's say, improvement that you take with you virtually forever. As you will take with you forever the group of your classmates, because sharing such an intense and demanding experience also uh, shapes deep relationships and uh, have seen uh, this network of friends being both uh, a very effective form of training to international professions. How to better train for international profession than working with 25 people from 18, 19 countries? Well, you know, you practice international cooperation while studying and you learn that there are not only different backgrounds, but also different aspirations and different perception of what's wrong and what's right about reality. So we, have we have a question from uh, uh, in the chat. Um, I will read it. Uh, Francesca, thank you for your question. I have a question. If I decide to apply, can I do it even if I don't have already my master degree and graduating by the mid of December? Thank you, Mara, and thank you, Francesca, for your question. Uh, actually, yes, uh, you can apply uh, in any case uh, on condition that you will obtain your degree within April 2022. Uh, so this is the only condition. Let's say that uh, if you don't have uh, already your master's degree, such as in this case, uh, that your graduation will be in December, and of course the deadline of the application is at the end of, the, of October, uh, for the moment, uh, you can do the application, but uh, of course, instead uh, of uh, uploading uh, your diploma, your diploma of your master degree, you will simply upload uh, uh, the list uh, of the grades. So basically the transcripts, uh, all the transcripts of the exams uh, that you have already done uh, and uh, the grades uh, of them. So yes, you can apply in any case. Yes, sure. Uh, Elisa was correctly mentioning that there's a formal final deadline for graduation, which is April 2022. 22, yes. Yeah, but as a matter of fact, 
you should plan to be completely free by January. I should move January 2022 because the program starts and it's a full time demanding program. So uh, graduating in December is perfect. Uh, graduating in February sometimes happens, but it means that the person has everything ready and just the discussion has to be done. OK, so I think this is important because it, don't think you can pursue at the same time the conclusion of the previous course and the new one. I will um, ask you, Elisa, some questions that normally arrive uh, to my email when I uh, receive emails from candidates or people that are interested. Um, is there a specific background uh, that is required to attend the master or is the master open to different backgrounds? Well, actually for us what counts most is uh, motivation and passion towards the international cooperation and development sphere. Uh, as for the background, we don't have, let's say, a specific average because uh, uh, each year we have a different class. Uh, for example, last year we, we had a legal doctor that attended our courses uh, and uh, decided to take on uh, a new professional a new, a new professional role by linking her uh, background in health with uh, our master in cooperation. So each year we have different uh, uh, interesting uh, person, uh, people and personalities, uh, also considering the, the professional background. So uh, no, there isn't a specific back, a specific background uh, for our master. Uh, if you are passionate and you, if you want, uh, uh, if you care about uh, cooperation and development, uh, uh, this is uh, the program for you. The background that is absolutely required is the possibility for you to tell us in a credible, reasonable way that you are interested in, in international cooperation and development. This may be because you are an, a medical doctor that has helped uh, in a refugee camp or because you volunteered in your country uh, for some initiative that has a development, a social impact and development content uh, for any other reason. Of course, including you studied topics that are related to development, social, economic, legal. Sometimes we have lawyers with an interest in human rights. Sometimes we have engineers with an interest in uh, um, catastrophic, in managing the, the consequences of catastrophic events. And this, once we had a young girl who, with a background in um, sports, so she had a training in uh, physical education and, and, and sports, and she ended up doing the international relations for what at the time were the, um, Winter Olympics in Italy. So, and she had relationship with all the low income countries that came to this sport event. Uh, so if you can imagine as many paths in cooperation as your fantasy can dream, um, and this is indispensable. So this is the background we need. People that have an idea people that want to improve on what they already are. So if you are a lawyer, you can add to that. If you are a medical doctor, you can add on that. If you are an expert in communication, you can add on that. If you are uh, an expert in foreign languages, again, uh, so economics, political science, journalism, name it, uh, any background, can be associated to the appropriate motivation. As, as far as we can tell, the most motivated, the people with the strongest motivation are the ones that 
also have the best performance. Um, thank you, Professor, for your passionate yes, <laughs> contribution. Of course. of course. And uh, uh, another, another, um, another question, which is uh, um, normally asked: uh, um, the master is in English, of course. Okay. So, um, on which is uh, the level of English that is required uh, if there is any kind of uh, um, certification required? Well, thank you, Mara, for this question. Actually, uh, you uh, let's say that uh, as for the list of documents uh, that I have shown you uh, earlier, uh, you see that uh, there is not a, 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 a language certificate, uh, but uh, what counts most uh, is, uh, of course, when applying to the master, but also during the interview, is to prove uh, that you are fluent in English and that you can deal with an entire program that is taught in English. So it's fundamental, the fluency and be ready to uh, attend, to learn and to do exams in uh, English, because, of course, this is a full year one year specializing master, all taught in English. So uh, we do not require a basic level, let's say, uh, as for the documents, but we will test the English and the fluency and the fluency in uh, the application. So when writing, they say, uh, and also in the interview. So this is fundamental, otherwise, uh, uh, it has no sense to apply to, to a master in English uh, if you're not ready to, to, to attend and to, to do exams in English. Okay. Um, I would uh, say that um, if no other doubts are raised or other questions are raised, we may conclude uh, here the, um, the, uh, the presentation, the webinar. Um, of course, we, Elisa, as she mentioned, she's available for you to for uh, any kind of doubt that may, you may have. Questions, feel free to contact us uh, at any time. Uh, you can also um, surf the, the, the web pages of the of the master on the Aziri uh, website. And uh, um, we hope to see you in class uh, later on. And um, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, Professor Beretta, for your passionate <laughs> contribution. Uh, thanks, Elisa, for your uh, very uh, um, detailed description. And of course, thanks uh, to Alessandro Tronconi for uh, his. Um, contribution for his enthusiasm uh, and uh, we wish him uh, to continue in his career path that we are very very proud to have uh, somehow contributed to build okay uh, thanks to everybody in the in the floor and uh, uh, we will meet for sure in class in, in January okay Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.